it's okay with everyone. We'll get going. So good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 12th, 2021 Town Council Informational, informational Work Session. Uh, Mayor Mahoney is taking a well-deserved break right now. So as Vice President of the Council, I'm going to preside over the meeting. I'll call the meeting to order. And for the record, note that all five council members are present. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the new flag of the United, United, United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands, one nation, one nation, nation under God, uh, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. For all. Thank you. We have two items on the agenda to discuss tonight. Uh, we'll start with the first item, the Chesapeake Beach Water Reclamation Treatment Plant replacement of the bus bar and existing motor control center. Holly, do you want to start it or go to John? Uh, sure, I will start it. Thank you. Um, so the town council had previously reviewed uh, an option which would include making uh, repairs to the existing bus bar. Uh, and ultimately staff recommended not to go that route um, due to the fact that um, alteration of the bus bar at that point would not allow us to certify the repair. So uh, water park or water reclamation treatment plant staff um, reworked another option to put before town council that would re um, include uh, repairing the, replacing the existing bus bar and existing motor control center. Um, the second option is um, quite more expensive, um, which is a complete replacement of the motor control center. At this time, town staff is recommending option number one at $30,000. Um, we would not require a budget amendment for this. It would come out of the water reclamation treatment plant uh, capital improvement budget for this fiscal year, uh, and it would be uh, billed um, per the um, portions to our partners. And if John has any additional details to provide. Um, well, we, we got a little twist on what the Eaton Cutler Hammer MCC um, came back to us and decided not to um, not to fool with it, basically. They wanted to wash their hands because it had been modified from the original design of it. And they just said it was, you know, the original design was 1991. Um, so um, we got two other options, which was to put a new one in. And basically anywhere we went, we would have to get it custom made because it's, it was only part of the five verticals that were left of the a modification. Um, I had included an option one that I kind of recommend of all benefits and everything, how we would get it um, up to, you know, how to monitor and get it inspected, that all the work would be done, certified that it was done correctly and two specs. Um, we would have a third party come in and do all the testing after the work was done, laser it, torque it all out on the screws and go ahead and certify that the work is done correctly to specs. Um, so the power part of it uh, would be taken care of and then plant staff on this opportunity would install a power monitor, which would tie in about 70% of all electric being run into the plant because we already have two other buildings with power monitors uh, right now. This would add a third one where it would include the highest um, juice that's being used at the plant. So we could monitor the highest load. And by saying this, we can also, it's ethernet and fiber capable. So we would tie everything into the main workstation on a computer that we can 
keep a rolling tab of it. And then we would move it on to autonomy SCADA, which we could add alarms to it when anything, um, any type of electrical drop on any phases are made. So we can, we would have records of it 24 hours a day, 365 that we could monitor and print out as reports to analyze it. Um, so we would, we would also, one other thing I wanna do is why we're taking this um, advantage of the work, we're gonna take and move two of the blowers, 100 horsepower blowers onto separate vertical bus bars. So we wouldn't have two of them on one vertical bus bar. Um, and then we would look at everything to make sure that all our phase monitors and the equipment and the surge protection on the equipment are all updated and working properly. We would also add it to the work assessments that would um, be monitored on checklists. So, you know, the staff would know where to, to go and to, to run a monitor and um, just log in different rates on it um, for the powers. So everything should be handled, I think, appropriately and at a price that I think we could do out of our budget. And I think this would be the best option right now because I looked into adding, uh, getting costs on new ones made and the cost would be, that was the cheapest price on one made was a hundred thousand. But um, the newer ones, that's a new one, but an Allen Bradley series 2100 would probably be 150,000 because it has a different design of the bus bars of their vertical bus bars. So all the buckets would have to be modified to fit the 2021 series Allen Bradley MCC control center. So um, my recommendation is option one, I think would be an, um, a budgetary and um, cost effective and we could monitor it. And I think this would be good for any insurance company or anybody, um, none that the work is done correctly. Thank you, John. Uh, I'll begin uh, questions or comments from the council, uh, council member Bodine. Um, no, I think I understood everything that John said. So that is his recommendation. I forgot if I've heard, is there any sort of warranty on this? Or that's the only thing I can think of is that if it doesn't last as long as buying the newer one. But other than that, it seems rational. That's a good question. I, I tell you, I didn't even ask the, the constructor the electrical company that would make the bus bars and install them if they would have a warranty on it. But I will find out. And usually I'm hoping um, they might do their work for you know a year or so, but that's a good question. I'll have to find out what the warranty would be on the made bus bars. Yeah, so anything I can think of, John, is that if its life expectancy is far less than what it would be for the other option, that's the only thing I can think of a reason to not go with option one. And that's all I had, Larry. Thank you. Thank you. Council member Fink. Yeah. I mean, I, I certainly can't imagine, you know, overruling what your recommendation is on this, John. I, I am curious that, that the testing budget is basically what you're the, the component of this that you're using to ensure that uh, someone doesn't come back and say it was modified or not installed properly or, or uh, whatever. Do I, is that what I'm understanding here? Yes. And they would do all the, the bells and whistles on the testing with lasers and run the juice through it and just all the work that is done to the specs of that motor control center. The other thing that I probably didn't mention was I'd probably add this to an annual inspection 
um, have that company come back annually and do the same thing and spec it out again to give us like a certification like we do on our flow meters at the plant and certify that this, this bus bar is working correctly. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, I was going to ask a follow up about the data. You're, you're going to collect all this data. And I'm just wondering if that has an additional cost or if that if there's a cycle, at which point you you stop saving the old data and overwrite it or whatever. If you have an annual maintenance visit, uh, I would assume that uh, those data would also be made available for that purpose. And at, at which point, if there's a recertification, keeping it is sort of moot. Oh, definitely. We're going to add this into our server for logging in um, the data, and we're going to add it to the asset management program. Okay. So that that server has a four terabyte capability, so um, we're going to make use of that. Okay. Good. Well, I, yeah, that's great. I mean, I, I tip my hat to all the work you guys put into this. Thanks. Okay, um, I've got a couple comments and questions here. Uh, one I noticed in the background section, item two talks about the uh, alteration of the equipment during the ENR upgrade. And I mentioned this before, it's indeed unfortunate that this issue wasn't addressed during that upgrade, but that's behind us now. I think you've answered a couple of these things. Uh, B and SE will certify the replacement of the bus bar. I noticed in here that they also say that they will provide in their $30,000 estimate um, temporary emergency power while the repair is taking place. Correct, John? Correct. They're going to bring in a portable generator to hook up in case, um, I actually to run our backup blower. Okay, good. While they're doing all the work to that um, motor control center. And I also see in their estimate, they say that they will engage a third party inspector to verify the work completed is acceptable and meet specifications of the equipment. So I assume that will come with the certification at the end of it. And then finally, just a question. When I looked at BNSE's estimate, it has an expiration date of October 9th, three days ago. Um, can we confirm that they will hold this estimate? Because we won't be able to vote on this until the council meeting. Yes. Correct. And I talked to them um, Friday because I told them that if I do get this passed, I would need their W-9s and their cert certificate of liability insurance to enter into Tyler for the PO system. And they said, OK, but I haven't pushed to get it yet because all this stuff. But they still owe me all of that. So that, um, they they should honor this, this same quote. Okay. Well, be good to just check with them. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Morris. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Hi, John. Um, thanks, Larry, for your opinion there. Um, are these the costs involved here, did you say were shared with our partners? Yes. Yes. Um, and I apologize. Um, we may have talked about this before, but um, can you remind me why there are no competitive bids? Well, I didn't go out to any other companies because the companies that do this kind of bus work are either um, manufacturers of the MCC, which was Cutler, Hammer, Eaton. Uh, was one, and then the companies that actually have the certifications to do it, and I ran down the first one, and he's local, and after talking to him and had him down to the plant, um, I didn't go out to any other ones. That probably was my mistake, but I thought that their price was pretty good for, for what they were going to offer. Um, I looked into the other options on the new ones and what those costs were for the new ones. Um, but um, I didn't look into other people that could make the bus bars and install them. But to me, well, I'm always going to be an advocate of getting multiple bids. There's, it's not just uh, 
pricing components. Um, each specialist or professional we, we talk to, regardless of what the issue is, raises our understanding of what you know the matter is. And particularly with something like this, where it's a little on the technical side, um, it sounds like uh, you know we could have been well served with a little with some more a little push a little harder push on the outreach for the bids, I guess. Um, but I understand. John, what you're saying that the particular manufacturer here, well, this is uh, Bailey and Ship. Are they the manufacturer, the installer, or both? They are the installer. Um, they do have the machines to make the bus bars. So they would probably okay. be making the bus bar, bus bar plates also. And, and they're, they're familiar with serving these, these type of devices. Um, so I don't have any issue with that. Uh, given the lack of specifications, um, it seems that uh, we want to make sure that all the work is done per current NEC code. Uh, the material warranty was uh, warranty is always an important question, um, and maybe we can push for material warranty or up to ten years. See what they have to say. Um, again, it's, that doesn't that's not a labor warranty. That's just a material warranty, and I don't know what you can get for labor. Um, it, you know, I would, I would certainly, uh, figure out our warranty terms there. Uh, now it's, we're recommending the $30,000 option. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So for the $30,000 option, the, it says that the, the, the Bailey and Ship is going to provide a third-party electrical inspection. Yes. Okay. And um, is that something that uh, the cost is included in the thirty thousand? And we have, I would say, Wayne backslash John um, or Jay. I don't know. If Jay wanted to weigh in on it, but uh, would approve that that third-party um, uh, the third-party inspection inspecting company. Certifying is certainly better than verifying. Uh, other than that, I don't really have any comments. I know it's something we need to do. And if you all have looked at the long-term costs uh, and you're comfortable with the 30,000, I'm okay too. Thank you. Thank I, you. And if I could just, um, in terms of the outreach on this project, um, this is a, a project that is necessary for the plant to operate at 100%. And I know John has spent a considerable amount of time trying to track down vendors to act, that actually do this type of work to, to get quotes. Um, it's taken him quite some time to just get this one. So if we could take that into consideration as well. John, um, in the future, um, maybe reaching out to a company like Capital Tri-State up there in Upper Marlboro, some of those big electrical supply houses have in-house designers and we can get some good advice from them, um, from people that they supply to. Um, they, they, sometimes you can call them up and say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a good company that's doing this. And they have experience selling, selling particular things to particular individuals, just another avenue. Uh, I know sometimes it can be hard uh, to get uh, good coverage on some of this stuff, uh, but we definitely uh, like to uh, always wanna push out for that, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Partick. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, a couple of my questions have been answered. And then I had, I just had one last thing that I wanted to ask about. And, and, um, and that's the cost and the description. So in, in item one in background, it talks about the motor control center was installed in 1991. And my, the way I interpret that meaning that's old. And so you can't just, you know, it's not going to, certification is not going to be possible, as you say. And then if you go down under option one, um, item three, an Allen Bradley power monitor 5000 will be installed in the motor control center. So are we replacing the motor control center in this operation as well? Or that's all staying, the 1991 motor control center is staying? And there's no concern with that. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, what we're going to do, we, we've done some modifications in the ENR to that particular 
um, motor control center. We added two buckets for the new blowers that are 100 horsepower variable drive blowers. Um, now what we're going to do, we left the other old blowers buckets empty. Um, and we're using one bucket for our backup blower. So we're going to make modifications when we put all new bus bars in. We're going to make uh, modifications to all the buckets and move the buckets of the two variable drives that are on one vertical and give them their separate vertical um, power source off the bus bars like it was originally done. Um, and that would help out the life of the bus bars. Okay. Okay. And then I appreciate you explaining that to me. Certainly, um, this is, uh, I certainly trust you and, and Larry and your crew on, on, on what uh, you're describing and the, the um, option that you've laid out here. I'm just trying to understand it better. Um, and so that Allen Bradley Power Monitor 5000, is that included in the cost or is that something you already have or where is that? No, I'm going to purchase that um, again out of the budget, you know, okay. from, the, from the regular, my regular maintenance budget. Okay. Um, this is something I wanted to do <laughs> um, to add to it, to, to get closer to the electrical audit that I wanted to perform on to the plant. And then this is a actual, um, a better idea to do that. Um, because uh, I forgot to do that. Hold on one second. <sighs> Give me one minute here. <laughs> um, but we're gonna we have them in two buildings already in the ENR upgrade. Yeah. And this would I would purchase one to tie in, uh, and that would tie in about seventy-five to eighty percent of the electrical power we're using at the plant that we can monitor and get, you know, monitor how many kilowatts we're using per day, per month, per year of our particular most, you know, equipment operating at the plant. Um, but it's it's a maintenance thing that I can add as, as, and it's pretty reasonable. I can probably get one for about $5,000 and I want to get one guy in there to tie it all in to a workstation to go, then go to our autonomy SCADA system and mm -hmm. then we can monitor it 24 seven and alarm. You know, okay. that's for the whole buildings. That's for the whole plant. All right. All right. Well, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you. Uh, anyone have any follow on questions or comments? Hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is going to be the fun item, the Richfield Station Water Tower branding options. Holly? Okay. Thank you. So uh, the town council issued a uh, contract to K&K &K painting for the uh, upgrades that were necessary at the Richfield Station Water Tower. And part of that um, contract was to uh, provide some branding on the tower itself. Um, we've, we've worked with a graphic designer who came up with several options, about four actually, and unfortunately, a lot of them did not work just because of the dimensions of the tower. So we have two options here. Um, option two is more of what was included in the, the bid packet. It's the standard uh, town logo. It does not have the red border, unfortunately, just because of the distortion on the dimension of the tower. Um, and option one is, is a, a newly revised option that does require some additional labor, labor for the uh, installer and it's a, a wraparound design. Um, so just wanted to see what the town council's thoughts were on these uh, two designs um, so that we can carry forward. Thank you. I'll start with comments and questions. Council member Party. Yeah, thank you very much. So, so, wow, I appreciate the effort that's gone into this. Um, I took a look. It's it's interesting. I, I there was a little bit of discussion ahead of time, and I I would have to echo some of what was said. 
is that there's something appealing about both of them. But, um, you know, I do think sticking with what the, the town branding, there's something to be said about that. I do like kind of the, the I, and I do like the one, the option two better. Um, um, I think that having that band around the um, water tower is an interesting thing with the animals being a biologist. I'm like, wow, that's kind of neat. But I'm not really sure it's worth 15,000 extra dollars to do that. And it just means when it's time to repaint or redo, it's going to always cost a little bit more. And so, you know, I'm, I'm very good with option two. I must admit, I did do a couple informal surveys of people right before the meeting. Not a whole lot, less than a handful, but they, they uh, picked option two as well. Thank you. Councilmember Morris. Yeah. Um, potato, potato. Uh, they both look, they look, both look great. Uh, again, I do appreciate the effort uh, in getting this uh, in front of us. I had a question. Um, who was the designer that we worked with on this? Uh, it's, it's subcontracted out. Uh, I do not recall the name. Um, it's K and K is, is contracting. It's a firm out of state, actually. Um, he provided a couple of the renderings. I could get you their actual name. No, no, that's not necessary. Was that all included in the original baseline cost, that design fee cost? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, that answers that. And um, I guess you screened through some alternative designs that just simply weren't working. I'm glad that uh, we had the foresight to include uh, branding on both on two sides. Uh, that mm -hmm. certainly, I think, is important. Uh, first blush, I agree with Keith. Uh, you know, the town logo, and it's in keeping with that. And we do have a nice logo. Um, but I asked some folks, too, and, and, and everybody I spoke with thought that the cursor was going to be difficult to read. Uh, and that the bigger you could get the uh, words, actually, the better. Um, from an EDC standpoint, uh, we're going to brand it. We want to make sure we have uh, we want to have the, the, the good visibility and readability as well uh, there, because that's going to make its way into some uh, promotion stuff down the road for years to come. Uh, what kind of warranty do we have on the paint? Or in other words, a better question would be: What's the, the serviceable life of the um, of um, the branding? I can follow up with you on that and see if I, I don't believe there's any change, obviously, in the two different options, but I'll definitely follow up with town council on that question. Okay. Um, yeah, and I know it, it's additional cost there. The, the 15,000, if we add that in, are we still under the original uh, estimate to have the, the paintwork done? No, that would be additional. And and I think that uh, I had a conversation with Wayne prior to this meeting and, and we would work with the contractor if, if that, that is an option that the council's leaning towards and see if we could get a better rate on that. Um, um, okay, well, the, um, the you said that option one was selected by the public based on public feedback. Um, and I, I guess mm -hmm. we sent a survey out and mm -hmm. what, what would... No, I'm sorry. I, that, that's not, uh, we have not gotten any public feedback on these two options. Okay. We wanted to make sure town council saw them first. I understand. Okay. Um, well, I certainly would be satisfied with option two. I think it's great. Um, I would, I'd be leaning towards option one. Thank you. Just to be clear, Greg, you preferring option two or one? Option one. Option one. Got it. Okay. Um, I'll go next and just say that I looked at both of these and I think just from the consistency of the town branding, I would go with option two. Uh, Council Member Fink. Yeah, I don't, uh, uh, I definitely don't think it's worth the extra money. Um, and unless we're looking at rebranding lots of other stuff in the town, um, which I don't really see a need to do, I, I kind of like option two. Uh, and would definitely carry that forward into some of the wayfaring ideas, uh, Holly, that we've talked about. Uh, I'll be anxious to see what my committee thinks and, uh, you know, they can weigh in. Uh, but I, I, I feel like, uh, you know, I feel like option two is, is what the town already, already is doing. Um, it does occur to me that the blue strip on the bottom isn't necessarily 
exclusive of option one and could be used in other branding efforts. I'm not proposing we put it on the water tower. Again, I don't think it's worth the cost, but I assume that we own those images that, that if the, you know, the, the, the design firm did this work on our behalf. And if we wanted to use uh, a, a light blue strip with sort of silhouetted marine life, we, we would be permitted to do that in other places. Is that correct? That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So I guess the short answer is I like option one, particularly uh, given the cost. I'm sorry. I like option two, particularly <laughs> given the cost. Sorry. Okay. Councilmember Boudin. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I like them both. I can see benefits of both. But I think unless we're going to change our branding, um, I think option two, since it'll be visible from two sides, is a it's a the choice that I would select. Okay. Uh, just keeping a quick tabs here. We've got four in favor of option two, one for option one. Any final comments or questions? Hearing none. We'll move on. Uh, Council lightning round. We'll start with Council Member Boldin. Uh, yes, I just wanted to um, remind everyone that on Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning, the green team will be doing a activity which is refreshing the pollinator garden on the railway trail. So if you'd like, please come out. Um, it shouldn't take that long. And there'll be a good opportunity to uh, also clean up that area um, of some vines and such. So we look forward to having you there. Thank you. Yeah. Council Member Fink. Uh, yeah, two things real quick, uh, both walkable focus. One is uh, done a fair amount of work uh, to try to consolidate our list of projects and figure out what, what we're going to be able uh, to, to realistically do, and then even put some things on the docket that don't seem as realistic, but uh, that we want to try to move forward. Holly's been a huge help uh, in doing that. And um, resulting from that will be uh, our next meeting uh, on October 18th, on Monday, uh, really running through what, what Holly and I have discussed with the rest of the committee, um, to try to move some of these things forward. So I'm kind of excited about that to try to get some of these things uh, in gear and moving. And uh, just the second point that I wanted to make is that there is a walkable set of walkable webinars that are being provided uh, by the state of Maryland. You can find those. Um, it's part of their sort of Walktoberfest, um, emphasis on walking events. Uh, so I encourage folks to check that out. Thank you. Uh, just two things on my behalf. Uh, one, Council Member Partick and I are going to have a virtual meeting tomorrow with Holly and Wayne and Jay and a bunch of others to talk about the flood resiliency plan as part of the uh, Climate Change Advisory Group to move that forward. Uh, the other item I had was the uh, fall Maryland Municipal League Conference is underway right now up at Turf Valley. Looking at my screen here, it doesn't appear that we have anyone there. So hopefully we can follow up and see what was discussed up there. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Morris. Uh, yeah, I uh, wanted to just thank the town for the water tower work. The painting of the water tower, the ritual stations desperately needed. Anybody taking a look at it over there? Um, I'm not sure we could have maybe afforded to wait any longer. Uh, I wanted to remind, it, remind anybody that's listening that we have a Halloween movie at Callum's the Kellum facility, Saturday, October 23rd at 6.30. Um, now, Holly, what's the uh, response been for the, uh, the movie title? Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus, okay. Um, That's well, a good uh, one. I know we'll yeah. have a meeting before Halloween. Halloween's about my favorite time of year, but uh, you know, uh, we're looking forward to see everybody in person, hopefully uh, one of these days. Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Parikh. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just a quick reminder to folks who might be listening to, if you get a chance, take a look at the uh, town's uh, comprehensive plan, submit any comments you might have. Um, just a few more weeks, well, maybe more than a few, uh, about four more weeks, I guess, uh, to get your comments in. So we really want your input. All right, thanks. I'll just offer one last one to anyone who might be listening. Uh, the town has posted on the town website information 
uh, inviting people to put their names in for the council vacancy. So if anyone is watching this now or on YouTube or whatever, please consider submitting uh, your name to uh, take that spot. Hearing nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And let the record show that this meeting lasted 34 minutes. That was a well-run <laughs> meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Job, we'll see you Larry. all soon. Good, Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye. Take care.